Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org and in today's episode we're going to go over the basic steps on how to build a fairly simple uh, wooden bookcase. Uh, this is a project that I think would be very acceptable for most beginner woodworkers. It can be done using just a minimal amount of woodworking tools. You don't have to have a shop full of tools to be able to build something like this. Uh, I think in this project uh, I used a router, I used an, uh, an electric drill, um, a power sander, and you know I think that's really about it as far as uh, power tools go. So it is somewhat of a, a minimal project as far as tools required. Yes, you can uh, get it done a little bit faster, easier with some other tools, but I tried to stick and show you guys how to do it with basic tools throughout this, uh, this particular episode. Hope you enjoy. This is the results. So the design of this bookcase really isn't anything uh, terribly spectacular or special. It's just going to be a real simple design. And uh, I just sketched out a little piece here on the paper of what I want to do. Now, uh, the school that I'm building this for specifically asked for a certain number of things in this. Number one, they wanted to have three shelves, a one, two, three. Uh, they wanted the, the height between the shelves so they could put a 15-inch book in there. Uh, they're actually going to put 12-inch books in there, but they want a little bit extra room. And uh, they want it to be about three feet wide. So uh, we're, we're basically working off of those dimensions. You could very easily scale this up and go up another couple of shelves uh, without any problem at all. And you could also adjust the spacing of the shelves uh, depending on your particular application. Uh, if you've got smaller books, or you could even put adjustable shelves in here uh, if you wanted to. Uh, the material for this, uh, we're just making this out of some uh, pine shelving. So I'm keeping this as simple as possible. Uh, so we don't have to really do any uh, ripping the boards to width. Uh, they're already to the width we're gonna construct them out of. So this is a one by 12. Uh, of course, when they do the planing on it, you really got 11 and a half inches wide and it's three quarters of an inch um, thick. So uh, that's what we're working on. And I think I got just a couple of four, three or four, um, uh, one by 12s, we cut these to length uh, over on the radial arm saw. Um, you could use a chop saw or a comp sliding compound miter saw. You could even use a hand saw uh, to saw these, but uh, I used a radial arm saw. And pretty much the entire bookshelf was made out of this pine shelving with the exception of just one uh, one by four uh, that will also be down at the bottom and you'll see where that goes. So anyway, let's, uh, let's get to putting this thing together. So the longer boards here will be the uprights. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a little dado in here or a slot. It's gonna be three quarter of an inch wide and one quarter of an inch deep. And that will actually uh, give a place for these uh, shelf boards to actually go up into the wood and be captured inside the wood, uh, which I think is really important for the strength. You know, we can put screws in here, we can put pocket screws, we can put uh, biscuits in here uh, to hold the shelves in. But there's really nothing that's going to work as good as just a little small groove. And it doesn't need to go into the board very deep. A quarter of an inch is plenty. That's going to give you enough of a ledge to hold, support the whole width of the board. And uh, we'll take some screws from the end and just uh, come in and screw them in. And we'll cover those up with some plugs later on. So first thing we need to do is get set up to cut the dados uh, across both of these boards. And to do that, uh, we're going to use the router. Uh, and you could do this in multiple ways. You could do it using a, a table saw with a dado head. You could use a regular arm saw with a dado head. Um, but to keep the project as simple as possible, uh, we're going to use a router because that's something that I think more beginning woodworkers might have uh, available to them. So that's what we're going to use. So the first thing I want to do here is uh, lay out all my dados uh, on the board with marks that I can see. I like to see what I'm cutting. I like to lay it out. It just helps to keep from making mistakes. So I, I took both of my boards and I put them on a table. I lined up the bottoms flush with each other and I went through here and just measured where each one of these uh, three quarter inch grooves are gonna go. So again, up three and a half inches from the bottom, three quarters inches, 15 inches, three quarter inches, 15 inches, three quarter, 15, and then a three quarter rabbit at the top. Um, now, and I, you know, to do this, I used this, uh, um, square you use for doing drywall. You could easily use a regular framing square. Just anything to get a straight line across there. But we got these in place and now we're going to get ready to actually cut them with the, uh, the router. So on the router I measured over from the edge of the cutter to the outside rim of my router and it's two and a half inches and to confirm that I've got my 
fence here uh, mounted my straight edge and I just laid it up here and looked down the router bit and I can see that I'm where I need to be. So this is all set up. I know that I need to be, I need to have my straight edge that I'm gonna run on two and a half inches from this line, at least with my router and my, my setup. And you need to check that on your own router. Uh, depending on the size bit you're running and the size outside plate that you have on your router, that dimension can be different for you. Uh, but two and a half inches is where I need to be. Now to run my router on, I'm using this uh, clamp on straight edge. And this is just a, it's a neat little tool. This back part slides in and out depending on what size board you're on. I've got some marks in here where I want my straight edge to be and I just tighten this up in place. And uh, this is basically just like a little cam action down here. I just click that little bottom and now this is clamped in place. If you want it tighter, you can go to the next uh, lobe on this thing and it'll, it'll tighten it on up. But this should be good enough. And now I got a straight edge that I can run my router against and cut that first dado. So now comes the fun part. Sand, sand, sand. We'll start with 80 grit and we'll go to 120, and then we'll go to 220 and we should be good at 220. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get pretty much everything sanded and I'm not gonna bore you to death with this. Uh, we'll get it sanded and come back to you. After everything is sanded, we will go ahead and start doing the assembly and putting the shelves in. I'm gonna put a little strip of glue uh, down the bottom of these dados just to give some added strength and uh, take a little brush and spread that out in there. Um, we wanna work kind of quickly uh, once we get the glue going here, uh, just simply because uh, the glue is gonna dry and we wanna get everything put together before the glue dries. You have a relatively short open time uh, working with glue. Now I'm putting these dados or these boards into these dado slots. Typically what I'll do is I'll start on one edge and kind of get it going. And you may have to, these boards will have just a little bit of warp to them. And you may have to kind of wiggle them around a little bit to get them, to get them going down into the grooves. But they will go in um, and you may have to tap them in place. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm gonna use a hammer, I will either take a strip of wood and put across the top so I'm not hitting directly on it. Or sometimes if it just needs a tap, I'll just use the, uh, the end of the handle like such. But let's go ahead and uh, get all these put together and uh, we'll clamp it up tight uh, to let the glue set. So we've got this clamped up now. We're just gonna let this sit and dry overnight. Now I want you to notice a couple things. Um, number one, the camera stopped in the middle of my clamping job. So you guys got to miss a lot of me running around trying to do this by myself. It's a lot easier if you have some help. Uh, but notice that I've got some clamping blocks in here because we're wanting to clamp across the whole uh, face or the whole width of this board. And if we clamp right here, we're only clamping on the ends and we're really not pressing uh, the centers in. So I've just got some little, basically some two by fours in here. And that just spreads the clamping pressure out across this whole face. And it's on both sides of the clamps. Everything is tightened up and we're just gonna let it set. Also note that I don't have the top end. That's easy enough to just slide in later when we get through uh, or get everything set up. Uh, so I'm just worried about the dados right now. Uh, and just, so just the three shelves. We'll put the top on later. We'll put the bottom on later. Right now what we need to do is just let this glue dry. And the best thing to do for that is just to let it sit overnight. So that's what we're gonna do. After letting this uh, part dry overnight, let the glue get good and cured, um, we've taken it out of the cl clamps now and everything is uh, looking good. I set it on the floor, it's, it seems to be uh, fairly square and sitting level. 
Uh, but I want to put a little bit more reinforcement here than just a glue joint. And to do that, we're going to put some screws in from the side. So what I've done is take a framing square. I've marked a line for the center, right down the center of that uh, piece of wood in there, uh, the shelf. And uh, from here, we're going to actually drill some holes, countersink them, uh, where we can put screws in. And we're going to do it in a way that we can plug them so that the screw holes won't be real obvious. So in my cordless drill, I've got this little um, drill and countersink. And what this does, this is going to drill a hole. It's going to countersink it for the angle at the top of the hole. And then it's also going to go in just a little bit. We want to go in uh, just deep enough so that that screw head is going to be countersunk below the surface. And then I've got a plug cutter that will come cut plugs uh, and will actually fill these uh, uh, holes here with some plugs. So let's go ahead and uh, Drill some holes, put it on fast here, there we go. That's just fine right there, it's just deep enough to get that screw below surface. And we'll go ahead and put our screws in. Across the bottom of the bookcase, uh, we've got just a piece of one by four here. This is just to get that bottom shelf so it's not sitting right on the floor. And this is just kind of a kick plate across the bottom to get a more finished look. We don't want that to be open. Uh, we want that to be closed. So we're just going to put a piece of wood across the bottom. The back we're going to leave open. Uh, there's won't be able to see that. This is more for aesthetics. And uh, we'll just take some screws and uh, put this in place while we're at it. So now we're ready to put the top shelf on. Because this is not a dado, this is a rabbit, it's not closed on the top. The top's going to be open, but still we're going to put a, some glue across here and we'll put some screws in there just like the other one. Um, and so let's just go ahead and do that. Take my brush, make sure we've got a good even coat of glue in there on both sides. And shelf drops in. I'm not so much worried about clamping this top shelf in place. We're going to let the screws do our clamping power for us. And uh, so we'll go ahead and do these just like we did the others. We'll pre drill them and then screw them in place. Now we need to cut the uh, plugs that are going to go in and fill in the screw holes. And to do that, I'm using just a little plug cutter here. Uh, you can get these at a home improvement store or whatever. They come in different sizes. This one is for cutting a quarter inch plug. And, uh, we're just going to take a piece of scrap wood left over from the project of the same uh, material and color and all that as the original stuff. And we're just going to go through here and cut the plugs. The nice thing about this tool you know, a lot of people will use dowels uh, for their plugs, but what you end up with, you end up with end grain. Uh, but with these plug cutter like this, you get the face grain on the end of the plug, which just makes for a much nicer looking plug on the finished project. So now we're just going to go through here and uh, pull these out and I'm just using a little pocket knife. Uh, you can use a screwdriver or anything to just uh, snap these loose and they'll break right across the grain and we'll get a nice uh, 
collection of these plugs here uh, to go into the part. Now to install these, we're just going to take it and uh, coat the end of the plug in glue and insert it into the plug. And we want to pay particular attention that we orient the grain direction to match uh, the grain direction of the piece that we're working on here. And uh, they're just going to stick out proud, no problem. We're going to saw these off flush later on. So we do want them to actually be sticking out uh, outside of the, uh, the part. So that's perfectly fine. So after these plugs have dried in here, uh, what we want to do is we want to come and trim them off flush. And I'm using just a little uh, flush cutting saw. And uh, this is a somewhat of a special saw in that the teeth are only set going up. They're not set going back so that it doesn't scratch. You can run this across the surface of the wood and it doesn't scratch, but it will cut through there. So we're just going to cut all of these down flush with the uh, wood or at least close to flush and then we will come back and um, sand it flush when we do our final sanding on everything. So now we're going to get our sander out and uh, give it another good sanding, uh, go through the grits again. We've already done the, the uh, preliminary sanding on here but there, there is some roughness on here in some places and we need to kind of sand some joints down flush. So we'll go through all the grits again on it, uh, but this sanding should go a little bit quicker. And again, I'm not going to bore you guys to death with sanding, uh, but that's the next step. With the sanding done, now what we want to do is go ahead and put the back onto the piece. And this is just a piece of quarter inch plywood. I'm using some birch plywood here, it's a cabinet grade wood, uh, so that it has a little bit better, more finished uh, look when it's done. Uh, and let me just make a comment about this as far as cutting it to size. I use a table saw to cut it down from a 4x8 sheet. If you don't have access to a table saw and you're doing this in a, a home shop with maybe very limited tools, uh, when you purchase this plywood at the home improvement stores, many of them will do custom cutting for this. They'll have a panel saw in the, shop, in the store, a lot of them will. Uh, and if you request it for a small charge, they will cut it to the size that you need so you don't have to worry about uh, having a, a, a specialized machine to do that. Uh, we're just attaching this with some uh, finish nails. And uh, we'll just go all the way around and I'm going to also mark across the back where my shelves are and we'll put a, some um, uh, nails into the shelves from the back as well. And that will give some extra stability to those shelves. You get some heavy books in here. Just a couple of nails in the back will help keep those shelves from sagging. The other thing that the piece of plywood does for you is it keeps the bookcase from racking side to side. This is really the stability uh, in the whole bookcase is what keeps it from uh, moving and if it's a little bit out of square, if you didn't get it uh, perfectly square when you glued everything up, uh, you can take a clamp and go from corner to corner and actually just rack it and pull it into place and then nail this into onto the back and you should have a nice square bookcase uh, once it's all done. Let's go ahead and get this nailed down. So there you go, a nice simple uh, bookcase. This is a project that most anybody can do with just a minimal amount of tools at home. Uh, it's not fine woodworking by any means, but it's definitely functional woodworking and you can make a very nice project. Now this part is pretty much uh, finished as far as the woodworking is concerned. Next step will be finishing it and I'm not really going to go over that. And You have a lot of choices. We're going to put a, a stain on this uh, because again that's what our client is wanting. You could very easily uh, paint it if that's what you're wanting as well. So uh, it's really up to you. Uh, how you finish it out. It's up to you with what kind of wood that you make this out of. And again, like I mentioned before, if you want to, you can make a full-size bookcase. Just uh, add a little bit to the dimensions, uh, adjust your shelf spacing as you need, uh, and you can customize this basic design uh, to fit pretty much any needs that you have. So there you go. I uh, hope that helped you, and we'll talk to you later.